I, I'm not sure. If, the things that I'm thinking about right now about role playing might be too complicated for this conversation, um, but I think they're really important to me and mysterious. One is that we do not have to integrate everything into one synthesized wholeness. <laughs> that roles are like art forms. So I want to be able to understand, as we say in our creative practice, I want to know what form I'm in. Oh, I'm in the mother form. Now I'm in the dancer form. Sometimes they come together in some weird way, you know, but mm. they are not, like, as a mother, my job is, it turns out, is actually to be, for a, quite a long while, protective of my, you know, my charge. <laughs> uh, and then learn to release, right? Um, that's not specifically my role as a dancer or as a teacher. Right? My teacher role might be completely different. So I learned that roles are like art forms and they have a, a physicality to them and they have rules and things that I associate to, which I don't normally, thankfully, have to think about. Uh, so oddly, we do not have to integrate or have all of our roles blended into one final me. That's very helpful to me to have learned that. Uh, one of the things that we do talk about and that I use a lot when I'm teaching is the idea of what I call the little body and the big body. And the little body is, um, I'm trying to show you my little body right now where I'm not like jumping up in a performing way, uh, where I'm not going to the edges of time and space with my expanding my, you know, my range of connection to the edges of everything. That biggest body where I'm really open. A body can feel and experience the difference between this little bounded me and this, this bigger me. And that little body and big body are, in a sense, part of what connects up in roles. Uh, at home, I am more likely to be not only little me, <laughs> but bad little me. <laughs> 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 Judgmental little me, you know, nagging little me, you know. So I actually have to practice the, the, the little body of my home life as my priority. To prioritize the family, which is in Jewish, you know, wisdom for particularly, is the highest practice. To make the home, the family, the sacred, the most sacred place. That is my objective because it's the hardest. It's easiest to let it all go there and be in that little body and lose, actually lose role, lose art, lo lose practice, lose ritual. So, um, the, you know, a, a lot in my, my culture, uh, my, my experience is that we're being encouraged to get really big. We're encouraged to be magnificent, to get high, you know, high and mighty. And especially women, we've been working pretty hard these last few decades to, you know, show up and thank God uh, but this that big body is takes a toll it uh, we spend ourselves it, it, it doesn't sustain itself and so we don't also we do not have to integrate these two right these are two other things we don't have to so that expansive self expansive body spirit that can go all the way out and live at a pretty high vibration that is also what we see in people like uh, rock stars, you know, celebrities, that when they're out like that. And they usually have to use medication <laughs> to stay out that way. Uh, or they have to learn something about how to do that. I mean, I remember seeing some magnificent politicians in this state who somehow had figured out how to hold that energy without losing, losing their, you know, their connections. So coming back, being in the little me, that's something that I try to teach people. You know, that we can, when we get performative, we can, I call it, f bring up your flaps. We, we can open up. Some people are desperately needing to open their flaps to know that they have a big body. And they're freaked out that if they op just open their arms like that, something bad is going to happen to them. Probably because something bad has happened to them if they go like this. Or if their personalities are such that they just don't want to. But the little body, you know, is also a place we need to go um, and learn. And we need to, uh, this is old wisdom, 
this is old people wisdom, you know, how in a village around the fire, the body of the group opens up to this most visionary state. Opens, but then is not required to stay open or to hold on to that or to live from that place. In fact, the highest, most wise people are the freest to not live high, not to live big. You know, they, they know when to do it. They know when to be in their role, right? When it's time to have their medicine. So, um, you know, if I, could, if I could teach that, you know, to more people, that would be really magnificent because I think it would take a lot of stress <laughs> off of us as bodies. And, it does, <coughs> and it's, a, it's, a, it's a technology to do that. All, all people have to do is open their arms, feel it, feel it down. That's pretty, pretty much all you have to do. And then, no, you don't have to integrate it. And then start practicing how you bless the little so that we put our emphasis back on what's sustainable.